Okay, guys. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome. Let's uh, go on with our materials. So another fundamental subject today related to loops or cycles or repetition of some specific functionality. So again, I will not be very unique saying that loops are everywhere. Variables are everywhere. Conditions are everywhere. And loops are everywhere. Uh -huh. We have no one TV. Let's check it. I hope it will work. Oh, fine. So uh, just imagine this example, this mobile application. And uh, all we see there, for example, this is some products here. And uh, how we build that? Of course, there are modern techniques, modern frameworks, uh, and there are some different programming paradigms to build that. But in any case, at, at the some point, we have some, uh, you know, not uh, fully defined list of products. It could be different number of products. We don't know at the moment when we write this program, we don't know how many, how uh, many uh, these products uh, do we have. But we should map that products into user interface and we build kind of the same functionality like title, uh, image, maybe button, maybe price. And uh, we build that with some code. But this code should be identical to build next item. And next item. And next item. So we just should repeat this piece of code for different data. And we should repeat it many times. We do it everywhere. Every website you open, you see that news, you see that items. And what uh, is working under the hood loop? This is loop, this is some repetition of the code. Because okay, we have conditions. Okay, we have data uh, variables. And we could build this from variable, this from variable, this from variable, maybe use some condition to check should we put this information or that information. But at the end of the day, we should repeat that. We can just write, uh, many, many lines uh, and think, or maybe it is 100 products, so that's why let's uh, repeat that code 100 times and actually put that lines of code into our program. No, it is just impossible to do. We need to have some structure to automatically repeat this code. This is where we have loops, and loops are uh, one of the next powerful and very important and fundamental concept in programming. Okay, now let's just very quickly move to syntax of the loop. And let me present you first version of the loop, which we call while loop. Again, this is kind of English. So you see keyword while. When we start this loop, we just put while. So uh, how uh, you are uh, the students of uh, philosophy, ethics subjects, and you could... Uh, philosophically like uh, think and present things. So could you please explain me what word while means? Uh, while like. yeah. Yes, exactly. Any, any additions to that? Philosophical additions, I don't know. Philosophical. Ethical. <laughs> Uh -huh. So we first check the condition, then we implement, and then we check the condition once again, and then we implement. Yes, okay. Any other additions? Okay, fine. That's exactly correct. Next, our syntax. Again, we have these round brackets, and we must use that. By the way, in different languages, we could have these kind of loops, and sometimes, uh, for a condition, we do not use brackets, but uh, 
like for if or like for while, we have this, and you're already familiar with, we have these brackets. Here we have condition. What uh, result should be of that condition? What, what data type of this expression? Yes, exactly. So this is important to understand exactly. Uh, this syntax is just uh, the same as for if. A Boolean expression. Uh, and uh, then again, we have block of call. So very similar to if syntax, but the difference is with if we execute this code just one time, but with while we execute this code infinite, maybe infinite number of times until we meet the correct uh, expression, logical expression, which give us false, and then we stop this uh, repetition of this call. Okay, I also want you to bring it to your vocabulary, maybe something you need to note. This, you should know these words. So first, condition of loop exit. So uh, our loops have some condition how we exit. In this case, this is condition to enter the loop, to continue the loop, okay? So condition here, we, we have condition to continue the loop. Without this condition, our loop will be infinite and uh, we will just have kind of stack overflow problem or anything like that. So I want to demonstrate that for you and maybe, so for example, let me have infinite while loop, while, for example, true. That's it. Okay, so of course, uh, Intel uh, environment uh, already signaled me about the problems, but let's see this wonderful or even I could say awful results so this is uh, many many operations it is not so interesting let uh, even uh, do it in this uh, way let me let me do this so we will output number of repetitions or iteration this is another word you should know but uh, how, how many times will we have this loop going infinite? You see that. I try to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. Not bad for Java runtime environment, so many iterations. Uh, should we wait? Uh, it, it never ends. It's still working. Not like with the... Uh, like uh, when we call the function by ourselves, uh, this is another like call, uh, stack overflow problem. It is not so much repetitions, but with loops we, we... Uh, I don't think two million. I, I think it is, uh, it is more. So as you see, it, it, it's still working. It is 60, so 70 millions, I, if I'm not mistaken. So, but in any case, this is awful problem. What do we have now? Because our loop now is infinite and this is logical error. We should not open the door, open the door. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I see. Um, I don't know why, but it is, oh yeah, I see. Because if here in this, I have options, one, two, three, four, five, or one. It was chosen one, that's why only one uh, working. But if you chose every of that blinds, blinds, 
Okay. So um, we should never have this problem. Yes. Okay, byte will, <laughs> of course, not a problem. Not a problem. Uh, it's come back to minus. Goes in a circle. That's funny. Good experiment. Well done, guys. Thank you for the for the idea. So, um, in any case, this never-ending loops is a logical error in our application. Of course, th there is some cases for infinite loops. For example, for web servers, when you will learn web programming, hopefully we will meet each other on that courses too. So we have infinite loops to handle HTTP requests to our web server, and we have loop, and we just listen for requests and infinitely answer to that request. But in general, for smaller programs like this, uh, infinite loop is a logical error. It should never be, uh, it should never happen. So that's why we should uh, write our loops in very correct logical ways, not to meet these awful results, like loop without ends. Uh, that's why we, we should, uh, uh, again, think about condition when our loop stop. Then, next term, body of loop. We uh, call this uh, block of code, we call it body. Like maybe in HTML we have head, we have body. So the same here, we have body of uh, loop. Just to know, just to use this term. In other loops, we also use counter. In this while, we not always use counter. We will talk about that uh, later. And iteration, another very important word, very programming word. Uh, because of this professional deformation, I use even this word in non-programming world. Uh, I often talk to people, oh, we need to make one more iteration, and they think, what? Uh, but for us, it is just repetition. One repetition, we call it iteration. You should know this word also. Okay, let's try to understand that from a uh, logical uh, perspective. So uh, first of all, uh, yeah, first of all, let, uh, let's see this code. We introduce integer variable, by the way, it is counter now. And uh, we start uh, from one value, then our condition, while i is less or equals to five, we do the loop, we do repetition of iterations. So inside the loop, we output this i, and then we increment that. So tell me, please, on the first iteration, what value of i? One. One. OK, this is first iteration. Second iteration. Two. Three. Four. Will we have six iteration? Yes, because it will be different. So it will stop. It will stop. It will stop. It will stop. So we will check if i is equal to five or less. And if not, and it is not here, we will not run body of loop, right? At this point. Or we will. Uh, so we are here, six. Yeah. Okay. So this the question is where at the edge between one iteration and next iteration. Okay. So uh, and uh, let's uh, jump into flow chart. I equals one. This is process. Then our uh, condition, if I less or equals to five. Uh, if true, we print I and increment I. Then come back. Then again, come back back and when it equals to six we move this branch and on this branch we have no 
any actions and we end. So again, let's move to the code. And you tell me, what uh, will we see after that code? What will we see in uh, our console? Before I run that, what will we see? So this is my console. Here we have this uh, kind of stupid results, but what will we have uh, in this case? So what output, what will I see in the terminal, in the console? Yes. Iteration one. So you Java runtime environment now, so you just dress that up. And uh, first iteration, second iteration. This is our console, okay? What next? That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's correct because uh, I have no this mark here. Oh, you smart students. Yeah, we start with zero because you didn't see this. Okay, let's let's make it like in presentation. So we should add this, right? And in this case, we have five iterations. Yes. Magic. This is when you have twenty years of professional activity. You are marked. I'm joking. So this is an IntelliJ D a trick, and uh, it should work in your case even without any options. Uh, if not, uh, you could jump into uh, like. Uh, some you know seconds and find it somewhere in like text editor or something like that appearance or it is somewhere yeah so it looks uh, cool yeah okay I agree uh, especially this one this is arrow and some languages uh, for example JavaScript has a lot of arrow functions and it's so beautiful to, to see this kind of error in your code, not that just minus and more mark. Okay, this is not related to loops, guys. Um, okay, I hope everything is understandable here. Let's move forward. We have another variant of the loop, do while. So what is the difference? You see the code and you tell me what the difference of this loop in compared to previous one. So what uh, in compared to previous in compared to previous example, uh, what the minimum iterations this loop will have? At least one, because previous one could have zero iterations. Are you agree? Because we first check, and if this check is false, then nothing be executed. But in do while loop, we always have at least one iteration. Sometimes it is more convenient. I could say that in, in reality, we almost use in most cases while. But sometimes it is uh, more convenient to use do while, make one iteration, and only after that check uh, the condition. Okay? Recording in progress. Okay, as an except exception. А что значит не співпадає? Може бути будь-що, може бути infinite loop. So yeah, this is our responsibility to logically create this in proper way. Yeah, I understand it, but I just I want to know that. We could we could try. 
when you have these questions, and this is good questions, again, experiments, yeah? We could play with that in uh, any way and see. For example, we have this uh, invention today that when you use byte uh, and run very like uh, long loop, you will have this infinite loop because of uh, without errors of overflowing of bytes. So, I mean, let's make uh, some uh, some something with that. Do while so, how we check your idea, Yaroslav? Good idea, yeah. Let's, uh, for example, do this. What do you think about this loop? Yeah. Yeah, I think we can do You see, so do we have condition in while? Yeah. We have condition. This condition will give us either false or true. But from the logical perspective, will it have any sense? Let's see. And uh, let me at this code to make to visualize that what hap what just happened ah while i equals zero so yeah one iteration and that's it L let me use for example this do you see the difference it, it's not equal yeah that that tricks uh, with uh, with uh, that emoji, maybe I, I should uh, disable that. Um, not equals to zero. What do you think about this kind of condition? Infinite loop. Yeah, like with byte, yes, yeah, so who knows? But, but in general, this is logical mistake again. So we will never, uh, get this value, and that's why it is just logically wrong to, to make incorrect to make this kind of loop. But we could, of course, uh, make something more uh, convenient or more correct, like uh, again five. Or let me do like the same, less or equal. And this is what we have, starting from two. Maybe it is not what we want, but this is do while loop. This is the, the difference. That's why to get the same results, we should start from the zero, I plus plus output or put uh, output, yeah, about. So there are variants here. Yeah, now I have from one to six, I want from one to five. So you see that. That small tricks, uh, this is what uh, you gain when you program and see that uh, small, like, uh, you know, options. You could put less here or you could put less or equal and you get different results. So in most cases in, uh, in C++ styled languages, uh, when we meet counters, we use less, not less and equal, but in most cases less, and we just start from zero. This is more convenient way to get five iterations, starting from zero until you less than number of iteration. You get exactly that number of iterations. Okay. So this is it. This is this example. You see we swapped uh, that uh, output and increment here, and we have the same results. And flowchart start. Uh, introduce variable with value one, print this variable, increment this variable, check if this variable less or equal to five. If true, we repeat, 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 repeat five times. And when uh, we don't, do not meet condition, we just end the loop, okay? Now, more interesting and more use, use it uh, uh, loop for loop. Many languages have for loop, and for loop, this is kind of automation for, this is more strict approach uh, for 
previous loops, but we have counter here in most cases. We have condition and we have some update uh, expression. So again, abstractly saying, what do we have with four? We have three expressions here. Comparing to previous while loops, here we have just one expression. But in four, we have three expressions. First expression, initialization. We execute this only one time. We initialize something, whatever you want, whatever we want. For most cases, we just initialize counter. We create new variable of uh, int. Then condition, which we repeat many times. And update, this is our, in most cases, increment of our counter. And we again repeat that many times. So second and third expression we repeat in iterations. Initialization we just execute one time. This is how for loop works. With our uh, counter example, this is what we have. So we have a little bit less text. This is just the same in compared to previous while loops. But as you see, we have just one line of code for body and we have just one line of code for for loop and uh, at just three lines of code. So it is more like concise, more beautiful form, maybe also um, not beautiful, like awful. I always, uh, it is not, not, not so beautiful to put this then semicolon, put this semicolon, remember the syntax, it, a little bit complex. Oh, but but four is is very 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 important loop. This is how it works. So uh, let me try to implement that also here. So you see how many lines? One, two, three, four lines here, and now we will have a little bit less lines. So let me just delete that because I want to create integer value, integer variable again, int i. I'm just initialize, I'm creating new variable. Then we have condition, i less or equal to five. Then we have update, which update do we need? i plus plus. So this update somehow should influence condition. In a, because uh, it will not uh, work. Yeah, initialization, I didn't uh, complete that. Initialize i, then uh, condition, and then, then increment. This is it. Let me run it. Starting from zero, yeah. Of course, we starting from zero in uh, C style at languages, but this particular example, we should start from one. And that's why we will have all we need, okay? What are your questions regarding for loop? What interesting in for loop that we could use uh, any stuff inside. For example, initialize, uh, I don't know, we could put, for example, south here, start. Then we could put any condition true, for example, oops. Then we could uh, update, I don't know, like, so I'm just writing some uh, awful code, definitely. I never wrote this in my life before uh, and never will. But uh, you just should understand the, the particular syntax of that. And I even could have empty body. And now tell me please, what will I have uh, in this uh, example? Yes, indefinite loop. Yes. 
So my first initialization, I, I'm output something, then uh, I have indefinite uh, loop condition, and then on every iteration, I do just output iteration. I will run that, and this is it. For you just to know that this is actual three expressions, and you could put anything, but we never do that, and please, don't, uh, you could experiment, but never write a code with uh, this kind of stupid things. We use four just for counters. We initialize counter, we check counter, we increment or decrement counter. This is how it should be used, this for loop. Okay. One more interesting thing. We have break keyword, and it also could be used in loops, what that mean? What do you think? Break. Uh, to open. Yeah, just to exit. Just, uh, you know, uh, that uh, stop cron, what is it? You know, some, some exception happened to you. You want to stop loop just logically. You want to do that. And you can with this break keyword. I could say that you should not rely with your algorithm thinking on break in most cases. In most cases, you just create correct logical expression, but sometimes, like in my stupid example, I could have break. I don't know, let me put, uh, of course I need some condition. We have I already, that's why I could use I here. I plus plus. No, we haven't. And we cannot use it outside of selection. Yes. So this is uh, uh, observation that this int i could be used just inside that for loop. So and I could put, for example, if i equals five. Break. And put I here. So again, this code is, oh my goodness, very, very bad code. Uh, yeah, and, but it, it works. Not, not uh, what exactly, we need break when we have six. It is, yes, exactly. Or just swap this uh, uh, these lines. So in any case, my uh, my aim is to demonstrate that you could use break. For example, in this uh, loop, we could do the same. If i equals three, for example, break, and let me command this code, not to bother our attention. And we could run this code. Without break, it should be from one to five, but now we just come to third iteration and exit the loop. You see how break is working. Sometimes uh, it is a good choice, you know, good option, but uh, I would recommend try to not to use break. And if you really need that, only in that case is use that. Yes. What are the functions for command? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, in in my computer, I use command and uh, slash. And in Windows, I I think uh, control and slash. Very useful uh, hotkeys, and you really need to know that. Good question. Oh, again. You mean comments? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, multi line. And uh, IDE even helped me and put this uh, by uh, itself. 
Yes, exactly. But in most cases, uh, in my practice, I use these comments, you could say. But when we, when you uh, put document comments, then yes, you could uh, use that document comments and you could document your uh, function and explain that and that will be automatically created documentation, for example, or uh, so yeah, that's correct. Okay, now I want you to practice a bit. Could you please uh, write a code? Now open your IntelliJ IDEA and please run a code which will, you, you could output just one asterisk, one asterisk at a time. Uh, and please uh, make a loop and uh, give me this output. Very straightforward, but please try it. Wonderful. Very powerful algorithm. Okay, so uh, now let me show you again. Uh, you get it. I, I have some styling here, so I introduce just for my convenience variable asterisk and uh, to put this uh, spaces also here. And I also uh, introduce uh, number of iterations and then I write starting from zero and have just less like C styled for loop or less than count of iterations and just print a len asterisk. Okay, yes. Uh, why five asterisks? J just asterisks, maybe here, just one, in, yeah? In, instead of n, we can type five without creating a variable, right? Ah, here, yeah? But it's generally better to make it with... Uh, yeah, you should, uh, exactly, good question, guys. I could say this. Every time you see hard-coded value in your code, you should ask yourself, is it okay? Because you should your heart uh, should start a uh, bit uh, more quickly, or this is hard code, my goodness, my code is so unclean, it could not be happen, I should introduce new variable. So this is good way to think. Yes, in most cases it is better to have, because if I decide to have 100 asterisk, I just, and I have many other four loops in my program, I change just one place, and then all my program will, will just uh, get it. And regarding asterisk here, I don't think we really need this variable here. We of course could just output, but when I work with that and uh, I uh, tried, I, I decided I don't want to put uh, the spaces everywhere and I just changed that for a variable to have these spaces and uh, but it is also convenient. But yeah, this is the answer. Next task. Please do this. Again, it is for loop. Uh, and only one asterisk in one time. Because the smartest people will just output one string, yeah? So, but this is not the case. Yeah, yeah, just, just, uh, where is that? Yeah, just uh, change a little bit. Yeah, how, how many, what changes do you need? Delete two symbols, yeah? Not print a LAN, but print. Yes, exactly. So, you see the result. Here, just print, not print a LAN, but just print. Okay, this is for our understanding. Now, the most interesting. What about that? Only one asterisk, asterisk at a time. Can we create two? Why not? Body of loop is, is a black box. You could do anything you want inside the body of loop. Okay? I have four loop here with I counter. With this for loop, 
I want to run through records. One, two, three, four, five. But for every record, I also should run another for loop and output, let's say, columns. That's why inside this for loop, I put one more for loop with another counter, not, not I, but some J, K, something like that. Let it be J. This is like low. This is like, I don't know, um, holy choice, I and J. So, and I have one more loop for output uh, one asterisk. So, uh, let me show you the solution and please program this solution just now. I give you a few moments. This is the solution. Uh, you could change asterisk uh, variable with just hard-coded value of asterisk. But what do we have? Four, outer four with I counter and inner four with J counter. And this is it. So N and asterisk, it is variable. You should have this variable in your code if you have just the same implementation. For those who are uh, waiting, <clears throat> please try to run debugger now. Run debugger and uh, see how it works. Uh, put a checkpoint somewhere in the, maybe here, system out print, and see how these repetitions work. OK, guys, uh, we will make break soon, but now, I want all together trying to understand what we just wrote. So it is good for us to have, the, to have this debugger. And I will use maybe my whiteboard and, uh, and so on to play with that. So I run this code. Before, uh, let me ask you this. Before we jump inside the loop, what do we have? Okay, basically we even have no i variable and j variable. Before this line executed, that variables even not existed. So i and j at this point, before, so not exist, not exist. Then I execute first uh, line of this code. And what part of code will be executed? First time when uh, Java runtime environment jump into my form, what first expression will be executed? I. Create I. Initialization. No, initialization. First of all, be before jumping into for loop, we initialize i variable. So now i variable uh, starts to exist. Exist, okay? We executed this line of this part of code. Then we compare, then we put zero into that variable. So now it is exist, not only exist, it have value zero. Next. What will program or our Java environment will do next? What next? Huh? Compare each to n. Yes, compare i to n. n equals 5. This is our variable which we uh, created here. So that's why this variable exists. We, hear, we see uh, it here. So we compare i, which is 0, less than 5. What result of that? True, okay. That's why if it's true, we jump inside the body of the loop. So we come inside, right? Yes. On this line, when we execute, what first will be executed? Yes, creation of J and uh, put value of zero there. there. Now J uh, exists. What next? Comparison. 
j less than n j zero less than five what result true that's why now when i click this button i should come to this line i click this button and yes i come to this line i come inside inner loop now i output asterisk so that was basically previous iteration i already showed you that console that we let it be our console we already uh, have one asterisk and this is our basically second iteration so let me repeat that we come back to our inner loop we make what before we uh, compare again we make incrementation of j so now j have value of one after that we what compare it right too loud yeah we need a little bit concentration that we will make a break basically again break to run out of this auditory so uh, one less than five what result true that's why we are here and we what do we do output another another asterisk yeah so let's okay when I execute this line then I will have it so let me execute it step over come back here see the console yes we have already two asterisk here and I again come back to inner loop my outer loop still waiting for me because my body of loop of outer loop is still uh, being executed now what implemented at this line what executed incrementation exactly so now I have not one but two here this is first action second action compared to what result true that's why we come inside the loop again and that's true we come inside the loop we execute that and we have third asterisk now what my actions here what actions of java and time environment here absolutely will we come to the body to the, of the loop true that's why we have yes again one more asterisk now what will I do here yes four Oops. four less than five that's why I still come to the body of loop and I still output one more asterisk let me show you yes come into this yes come back to and we have I have five asterisks now again what shall I do increment five this is my first action second action condition what result false let's see debugger should show us so if it falls then I can't come to this line let's see if if we correct I click this button and I'm um, didn't come inside the loop I uh, exit the loop and I come to next line next line what to do so this is next line how we use this uh, like uh, mark let's say this is break line and this is the question which you had right so uh, without this line you would have asterisk here 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 and here but now we put in this outer loop first iteration of outer loop we add break line so that's why now we come to this line now tell me please when I click uh, next in which line will I be placed? 
We have numbers of lines here. Which number? 20 what? 20 second. Okay, let's try it. Exactly. So we finished first iteration of outer loop. Have you heard it? We finished first iteration of outer loop. Yes, we have five iteration inside inner loop, but just now we just finished first iteration of kind of I loop or outer loop. Now, what shall we do? Increment. One. What result? True. True. That's why we should come into this. So we come inside the loop. And again and again and again. And we have second line. This is it. Again, I'm come here. What should I do? Increment. And now I have three. Three less than five. And again. Yes, I have one more line. Come here. Yes, exactly, because it was uh, zero, then one, then two, then three, yeah, three. We see, by the way, these variables, and we see that I equals two. When I uh, run it, I have I equals three, three less than five. I come to this loop again, again, and I have fourth line here, and again come here. By the way, you see this very beautiful implementation in IntelliJD. I see I at this moment three, but now I will do incrementation. So I will have after this line four and four still less than five. That's why I will jump into outer loop iteration. I jump here and one more line. Yes, we have this fifth line and again, come here and this is the most important moment at this moment i equals four what will i do increment five less than five no so that's why which line should be uh when i uh, put this uh, push this button which line i will be placed Looks like 29, so let's do it. This is it. We finished the outer loop. So what are results? This is our results. This is what we need. So this is how it works. Do you have questions? Is it what? Hard for whom? For program, for hardware, for device. <laughs> for ethical, ethical question. Is it is it harmful for processor? <laughs> so, this is very good questions. Uh, question. So, basically, when we have loop inside the loop, how many iterations will we have? If our outer loop have five iterations. Our inner loop have how many iterations? Five. five. What overall count of iterations? 25. 25. What that mean? That n square. In algorithm analysis, we have this kind of big O complexity. So this complexity, do you know how to draw graph of this? Uh, how it called? Do you remember? It's not exponential. Parabola. Parabola. This is like this. Okay? So when I have five iterations, then I have 20, uh, when I have five, like, size of, of data, I have 25. Okay, not a problem. But when my program grows, you see what the problem, how it grows much. 
So when I have 100, I have 10,000 and so on and so forth. So basically answering your question, n square complexity when we have loop inside the loop, this is pretty bad algorithm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. This is pretty bad algorithm. And that's why we try to find something, another uh, like solution. Sometimes we need even this, and it is even, uh, e even more, uh, yeah. So uh, that's why this is a good question. But, but we often uh, really have that uh, hierarchical structures. We have outer if, then we have inner if, maybe then we have inner for, then, or maybe we have outer loop and we have inner loop. So for you, this decomposition, this hierarchical, uh, hierarchical thinking should be very usual. So it is absolutely okay. We have some structure, then black box. What is in the black box? Three loops, five loops, three ifs. Not, not, uh, it, it not bothered us. We just create algorithms and that's it. So this is how we decompose uh, big problems into small problems. We will definitely talk about it later. Okay, guys, now look, look to that. Wow. Now let's start with the, this is two different, uh, let's say programs or algorithms. Could you please uh, implement this and after that implement this? So uh, my suggest suggestions, it is the same, just two four loops, outer and inner. Yeah, just now think just about this one, about left one. This is same outer and inner for loop, but think about counters, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move to like answers. So for the first image, what should we change? We have outer loop. We have inner loop, we have i here, we have j here. In previous example, we had condition j less than n or five. So we should change it for what? To i or like this, yeah? If I'm not mistaken. If we just change this, we get the result. Let's try to analyze that. And try, please try everyone. So we change condition of inner loop and we make it dependent of on after, on outer loop, right? Uh, who have correct result? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works, works, amazing. Let's try to analyze that. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. It it depends. This this edge conditions like starting from zero, less than or equal. So this small. But uh, let let's analyze for ourselves. We have, this is our i, basically, uh, i counter. And uh, here we have j counter for every line. When we come to first line, first i, i equals, if we start from one, if we start from one, we could put it here, then how many stars we should output on the first line. One star. So if we make it dependent on uh, outer loop, then we just put the J should be less or equal to I or to one. On the second line, when J, when I equals to two, we need also output just two stars, two asterisks. That's why, again, less than i or less than 2. 
and so on and so forth. So we just put this uh, particular answer. I, I have two answers there, so I will not show you up. Let's, let me move here. Put I here and I have that result. I already have answer on my, unfortunately. Okay, so we have the answer. Try this. So I already spoiled, короче, spoiler. So uh, try try the second loop. It looks like this. Uh, I, I, did, uh, I did a slightly different. Slightly different. Yeah. I basically well, I mean, re yes. re reversed it ah. into decrementation. Oh, so decrementation. Yeah, good yeah. good choice. Slightly more simple. Yeah. So <laughs> good choice. Yours. Yes, yeah. I agree. Also, you the, and then you okay, you uh, you. Oh, you start. Outer loop. From, oh from yeah, from that makes sense. Outer. Wow, yeah, we already have two uh, three. different. No, maybe two. Maybe three. I have something. Three. Material. You decrement in the outer loop. Yeah, yeah. And two. I yeah, in three, the three choices. My one, yeah. yours, and yeah, good ideas. Good ideas. So this is uh, this is my idea that we uh, basically make these calculations. Another idea, how you name this? Uh, Maxim. Maxim. Idea of, of Max is decrement J. So start from N and decrement that. And while uh, K is decrement Max. Oh, even, even, wow, yeah, it's important. This is second way to do this for. And third, uh, which goes demonstrated, it is starting I from N and uh, decrement that and for just the same as in previous example, right? And I. Here, yeah, i is bigger than zero. Yeah. So we have three possible solutions. Of course, maybe you could not grasp all of three in the same moment, but I would really recommend you to play with that and really to understand that why is it working. So this is uh, this is good mental exercise. I have a question in the chat. It's not a question, it's also here. I just joined Hunger System online and we have some good examples online and uh, Mikhail and Alvin also offered the solution that will work and uh, the strategy to decrement in the inner cycle. Uh, yeah, this is, I think, what uh, Max has just uh, presented. This one? Um, yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, thank you. In any case, you could also share the screen and we could jump into that. So it is also possible. But yeah, if it is the same, like, so you see this interesting games, you see this interesting variations and it is good for us to understand this, this loops. Now, this is your task. I allows you to uh, be in uh, groups of two or of three people. What I want uh, you to have, you will read it, but but idea is this. My computer will, uh, will set some random number from 0 to 10, including 10. I don't know what computer uh, have chosen. Computer ask me, guess the number. I'm trying to do maybe 3. Computer says me, try bigger. I'm say eight. Computer says me, try smaller. I tried five and computer says, correct. You guess the number in three attempts. Thank you, bye bye. 
So this is the game I want you to create just now. And so, uh, but uh, first of all, how to create random value. This is uh, how to create that. And I want to ask you to create a flowchart diagram first. Guys, please create flowchart diagram first. I suggest you to use SmartDraw. I like this uh, tool. Maybe it was more convenient for me. If you would, I would recommend uh, this flowchart tool. So with your, in your groups, try to create that. Maybe you need piece of paper to create that. If you want to use whiteboard, you could freely come to the front and you could could even all together create, uh, draw with uh, different groups. Uh, maybe it will be easy to use. So total teamwork here, uh, but first flowchart, and then we will implement that. You will implement that. And this is your classwork, okay? Ready? Let's go. So I propose this, uh, this diagram. So we start, we assign value to X. We assign value to number of tries. And uh, then we print guess, guess the number. Then we increment number of tries. By the way, in many, in some cases you propose it. You had this block of code on each branch and we had duplication, but uh, it is better to make super. Uh, so we could put it here to make this code just one time, to put this code one time. Then we check if user guess more than x then we output this information otherwise we make one more condition if user guess less than x we output this information otherwise we check if user x not equal to x if we have this situation we come back and we have this loop or we output uh, you guess the number and number of tries and n. So algorithm for that, again, this is not the only possible algorithms and many of you make also good algorithms. So this is not the most holy version, absolutely not. But this is the version where, this is the uh, variant where we actually could use do while not so often, but yes, we could use the while here. We definitely have one iteration. We check uh, all of that. So increment tries, check user glass. So it is just implementation of that flow chart and then output. Yes, this is it. So if you have questions regarding that, you could ask them now. Any questions regarding this? Everything understandable? Most of you done something similar. Okay. <clears throat> 